Here's a look at the Michael Isimont hit on Nick Jensen that knocked him unconscious. They called it a major just so they could review it, and then upon review, they said there was no penalty at all on this play. I'm going to compare it to this recent Tucker hit on Bedard, and I'm going to show you why this one is clean and the Isimont one is not. And it all comes down to angle of approach and angles and physics. So this is the angle that both players are going towards the boards at in this particular situation. It's more of a 45 degree angle towards that giant sign at the red line there. Neither of them are going straight up or down the ice. Isama is taking away the space to the red line that Jensen is trying to gain in order to dump the puck in. And he's doing a good job of it by taking that angle. But if he makes contact traveling at this angle and from the angle of approach that he is going to make that contact at, that back line is the angle at which Jensen will leave that contact. If Eastamont hits him square in the chest even, best case scenario is he's flying 45 degrees backwards towards the boards, not towards open ice, towards the boards. So already, even if he hits him in an ideal way, this is going to create fairly dangerous contact with the boards, depending on how close they get to the boards by the time contact is made. Zoomed in a little closer to see the angle of, a, of attack there. All signs point to Jensen flying backwards at a 45 degree angle towards that sign. If he hits him square in the chest. And he doesn't hit him square in the chest. So that even further compounds things. Because if you look at the back angle here, the red line is indicating that even at this angle of approach, from that 45 degree angle of approach, if Isima had been able to get over to the left, another half of his body width maybe, where the middle of his number 23 was directly in line with that red line, if then that would be him hitting Jensen in the chest, even at best then, Jensen would go back towards just in front of the linesman there against the boards. But even that would have been better than what happened. And, it, and when you look at the blue line there, the blue line is actually the ideal angle so that you're shooting Jensen more backwards away from the boards than you are towards the boards. Look how far away Ice Asimont is from the ideal blue line and even how far away he is from an acceptable, probably, red line there. He's not nearly over far enough to create the right angle for this contact. And then this blue line represents what he's actually doing. So if you look at how far away that second blue line is from the first blue line closer to the boards, which indicates the ideal angle, he's significantly too far over to make appropriate contact in this situation. That's why the result is what it is. Remember, this red line is even as if he hit Jensen in the chest, which he doesn't. He hits him on the shoulder, which is that blue line closest to the center of the ice. Here it is zoomed up again. Look at Isimov's left shoulder and left arm barely catch the inside of Jensen's left shoulder. So he doesn't even hit square through the body and push him back the way he came. He spins him like a top and sends him spiraling out of control towards the boards. Look at the difference in this legal check. First of all, Bedard is taking a much straighter path down the boards instead of a 45 degree angle. He's turned almost 90 degrees to the boards. And then second of all, Tucker, when he makes contact, look how far his body's rotated. He's also almost 90 degrees facing back away from the boards completely before contact is even made. So when he follows through, yeah, Bedard does still go sideways a little bit because Tucker doesn't even get quite over as far as he should. But the danger isn't nearly as much because A, they're closer to the boards, and B, look at Bedard instantly going backwards away from the boards. If they were further away from the boards, this would be a lot more dangerous than it was. But they're closer, and Bedard goes backwards first, not towards the boards, at contact. Again, compare the positioning of Isimot. He's facing more 45 degrees towards the boards when that contact is made, not straight up the ice like Tucker. There's a lot of back force pushing Isimont actually back further before he follows through. Look how his body rotates back to his left before he bears down and really gets enough force to make that contact. So when real contact is initiated, 
He's facing towards the boards. That is going to make violent impact with the boards. And also, because of Jensen's angle, more 45 degrees towards the boards, and because Isimont doesn't get nearly out in front enough, like I said, he spins them like a top and creates excessively violent contact at an angle that you knew it wasn't going to be possible. For what it is, this is a very impressive piece of skating and strength shown by Isima. He's going heel to heel, he's dug in and leans, and then even with the counter force, he's able to plant again and drive through. It's a very impressive piece of skating and physicality. Unfortunately, it's just super, super dangerous and super avoidable. What he should have done is, since he's traveling at the same angle as Jensen, and he's set up for right shoulder, his own right shoulder to Jensen's left shoulder contact, he should stay on this path of travel and just keep skating straight and cut Jensen off from going down the boards. There's no need to try and turn this into a full body check because you're not at the right angle and not nearly in good enough position to make it safely. If they had both just carried on this path of travel right here, none of this would have been an issue. He might not have got a full body check out of it, but he certainly could have angled him off into the boards and made some contact, and he certainly would have been able to serve his hockey purpose. So what's the actual penalty I would call? Rule 41 boarding states a boarding penalty shall be imposed on any player who checks or pushes a defenseless opponent in such a manner that causes the opponent to hit or impact the boards violently or dangerously. And then if we scroll down, the referee at his discretion may assess a major penalty based on the degree of violence of the impact with the boards to a player guilty of boarding an opponent. At the bare minimum, this meets the criteria for a major penalty under the boarding rule. To watch this hit on review and reduce it down to a minor penalty would have been bad enough, but to wipe it off the board completely, to me, is a big mistake. I consider this a non-hockey play that isn't malicious, putting it in my 3-5 to five game suspension category. Tough Call would suspend Michael Isimont of the Tampa Bay Lightning four games for boarding.